Good morning, and welcome to Redeemer Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Gary Lodeholt. My mother was a teacher, and on occasion she needed to correct behavior in one or another of her students, and so she would assign sentences. I don't know if teachers still do this or not, but perhaps you remember someone being assigned something like writing a hundred times, I will not talk to my friends during class. My mother never did that. She would assign sentences, surely, but she usually required only about 25 or so. However, her sentences were something like, I will not provide a distraction by talking to my friends in class because doing so cheats me of what I can learn as well as cheats my friend of the possibility of learning important information that, while I may not realize it now, may be very valuable to me and to them in the future, and it much better meets the important needs of myself and my friend if I am focused on the lesson and paying attention. If you write something like that 25 times, you are a bit discouraged from being a distraction in class. Long and tedious writing was the job of the scribes. This week we are looking at the confusing number of groups and political parties that made up much of Jewish society in the time of Jesus, and one of the groups that is sometimes mentioned in the Gospels is the scribes. They aren't usually singled out and are rather lumped in with other more well-defined groups. The Bible might say something like the Pharisees and the scribes or the scribes and the Sadducees. So who were the scribes and what did they do? Scribes weren't really a group with well-established viewpoints, but they were often associated with those in positions of power and knew the biblical laws well. One might surmise that they were often in the company of the Sadducees, who were the powerful elite of the society, and perhaps they held similar views. What a scribe did was to write. For centuries, Judaism was an oral culture. In other words, in that day, the ability to write was fairly rare, and so most information was transmitted through speech. Nevertheless, there were occasions when things needed to be written down, and when those times occurred, a scribe would be hired to do it. Some of the scribes belonged to the priestly class. Other scribes were the record keepers and letter writers in the royal palaces and administrative centers. Made, they made records of transactions and deeds and other important documents. The Jewish scribes used the following rules and procedures while creating copies of the Torah and eventually other books in the Hebrew Bible. They could only use clean animal skins both to write on and even to bind manuscripts. Each column of writing could have no less than 48 and no more than 60 lines. The ink must be black and of a special recipe. They must say each word aloud while they were writing. They must wipe the pen and wash their entire bodies before writing the most holy name of God, Yahweh, every time they wrote it. And also before they could write the most holy name of God, they would wash their hands seven times. There must be a review within 30 days, and if as many as three pages required corrections, the entire manuscript had to be redone. The letters, words, and paragraphs had to be counted, and the document became invalid if two letters touched each other. The middle paragraph, word, and letter must correspond to those of the original document. This, the documents could be stored only in sacred places like the temple or in a synagogue. Finally, no document containing God's word could be destroyed, so they were stored or buried in a special box. There are still Jewish scribes today called sofer, and they still do their trade by hand, writing on parchment, and as master calligraphers create scrolls in the 
for the, of the Torah for use in synagogues. When the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in 1947, every book of the Old Testament was found with the exception of Esther. And in fact, they found 25 copies of Deuteronomy. These scrolls were from a time at least 500 years before the scrolls scholars had access to before, and when they were compared, the accuracy of these scribes was amazing. There is a copy of the book of Isaiah, for example, and in, when it was compared, only one letter was different. That's amazing when you think about copying it all by hand. Jesus never focused much on the scribes by themselves, and rather just lumped them in with other groups. But they were tied to the established order of things, and they weren't fond of Jesus, the radical, who was stirring things up. Thanks for watching, and remember to let this day belong to God.